decision that's how I live and let live why not what's wrong with that definitely yeah my last question will be i want to talk to you um, about a real important topic that you covered i think the other day and that's uh richard sermon in the nfl i don't know if you covered it you may have but you talked about the cte and the possibility you know of you know some of these players including him suffering from cte now some of the um you know symptoms would be uh memory loss confusion impaired judgment impulse control problems aggression depression and he also talked about himself you know going through a lot of you know psychological and emotional issues as well so what's your take on our richard sherman other nfl players and what we just seen from him the other day richard sherman um su- such a brilliant guy uh he reminds me of dr myron roll just super smart mm-hmm. super talented and uh I'm, I'm super impressed by him you know on the field and off Richard Sherman is not just a guy who's going through a mental health crisis. He's a man that probably has significant brain damage. Um, the CTE, it affects this part of that brain, that that, that uh, prefrontal cortex that mm-hmm. controls your ability to make logical decisions. So uh, mm-hmm. when that part is impaired, because he's taking all those hits to the head. Richard Sherman is all, you know, he's a, he but he's a head buster. He's a he's a defensive back. He's good. He's cracked a lot of skulls. You know, he's he's not the guy. Again, only one out of every hundred NFL players doesn't have CTE. He's not that one out of a hundred because he takes a lot of hits. So you, I would bet every nickel in my bank account that Richard Sherman has brain damage. There's no doubt in my mind. And so when you, it, it, and then when you look at the behavior, the aggression. Um, the the suicidal thoughts, things like that, all of that's connected. Um, my wife is an expert on on the human brain, and she said that, uh, uh, and she's an expert on suicide actually. And she says that just one concussion doubles your risk of suicide. Just one concussion. So you can only imagine how many concussions Richard Sherman has probably taken because this man's been playing football since he was in Pop Warner, and he's been good at it. He's been putting a lot of hits on people. So, um, I feel very bad for him. And I think that we have to have a really hard conversation about our relationship with football. You know, we really love it. I I love it. I love to watch a good football game. But I have to be honest and say I would not let my son play football, Uh, you know, because because most of those players, almost all of them that play at that level have brain damage. And uh, and, and so when the career's over and the money's gone and the lights are out and the women are gone and the fame is gone, you got this 35, 36-year-old man who's got the brain of a 67 year old, you know, uh, and I've talked to guys, I talked to, uh, I had a talk with uh, the brother that played for the Steelers, um, Antoine Randall L. Who, he won a oh, I'm watching. I, I asked him, I said, I said, Hey man, do, do how many of those guys um, have, uh, have that, that CTE thing? And he said, Oh, all my friends have it. He said, uh, he said they, they'll have a conversation with you. And two minutes later, we'll forget that they even had the conversation with you, you know? And, and, he, and he said that sometimes, you know, I can't sleep. I have trouble walking up the steps. He said, you know, you might be going to pick your daughter up from school and forget how to get back to your house. Uh, and, and he told me all these things. And I kept the conversation between ourselves. And a year later, Antoine uh, was on USA Today. And he said, uh, I wish I had never played football. And I remember when I saw that headline, I remember the conversation he and I had in private about that. And, and, and I said, think about this, right? This guy achieved every dream that you have as a young athlete. What boy doesn't grow up that, that plays football, doesn't dream of playing in the NFL or whatever, or maybe NBA type stuff, right? He did all of that, won a Super Bowl, and, and, and he says, I wish I'd never played football. That's heavy. Like, that's worth thinking yeah. about. Why would this man say that? It's probably because whatever he's going through internally is probably 10 times worse than what he's letting on. Right. So so we got to rethink our relationship with football. That's what's going on with Sherman. And the thing about being a black man is that you won't get that same sympathy. If you were a white woman, he could cry his way out of it and say, oh, well, this it was because the NFL exploited me and they made me play and they tricked me. And, you know, you know, the whole uh, the whole Becky tears thing. Right. They can get away with that. As a black man. You go out here and you do something like uh, the, the Hernandez guy that played for the Patriots. You go out here and you kill somebody because your brain's not operating right and you don't have impulse control. Oh, you just gonna go to prison? They're, they're not gonna want to hear any of that stuff. So, so you just gotta. We, we have to think about that. Uh, another brother. Remember the guy that played uh, Kellen Winslow, his son. You know, he yeah. out here raping old ladies. It's like, yeah. what? what think about this. This guy's six foot six. Oh, you know, worth uh, twenty million dollars, and he's world famous. But yeah, he's raping seven year old women. Come on, something's gotta be. 
messed up in his head. You know, so, so this is happening all the time. I think people just don't talk about it, but I think we need to talk about it more. The, the NFL, um, they have tried little things like, you know, to make uh, to change the rules up, you know, come up with better technology. Is the NFL now complicit? And do you think the NFL will ever want to see their product taken, you know, stopped? Because they, they're a powerhouse, let's face it. And after the movie came out, you know, they did a couple little things, but people are still getting this disease. So um, what do you feel about the NFL? Will the NFL ever let up and, you know, shut down their sport? Well, remember what we said before, that capitalism will kill you. Like, capitalism has no problem killing you for a profit. Mm -hmm. um, the NFL makes way too much money for that train to ever shut down. Uh, I think they're going to do everything they can, you know, take safety precautions. And and, and what and the thing about it is, is it's probably going to work because the public's mm -hmm. love for football exceeds any concern about the health and well-being of the players. So it's really up to players, um, you know, to do what uh, the, the guy Robert Smith, Robert Smith played for the Vikings. And if you remember him, he was a very good player. He had a lot of years left. And he said, I'm walking away. I don't want to keep playing. I, I, I want to keep my brain intact. And uh, and so uh, that's probably where it's going to be for quite a while. I cannot see our society shutting down NFL football. I just think it's way too popular. And people just look at it maybe like boxing. Like, yeah, you're going to pay a, pr a price long term, but it's a lot. It, it's, it's so much fun that we just going to if you will pay that price and we'll let you do it. Right. And, uh, and and am I and I'm not even one to really knock that. I mean, if a guy really you know says, look, I really want to play and I understand the risks. Who am I to tell me can't do it? Yeah. Right. I, I think the problem is when you have people that don't understand the risk, that's where I would want to intervene and say, you, you do understand what you're doing here. You do know what you're signing up for. And if they're good with it, you know, I mean, who are we to tell them no? Appreciate that. I got one more question for you, Dr. Boyce Watkins, on the Hip Hop and Sensor podcast. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Yes, sir. Um, it's about stocks. Now, it's a meme stock. I've been seeing you talk a lot about meme stocks, and obviously AMC and GameStop um, have been very popular in the meme stock. I personally, and I think, oh, you had two. We, we invested in AMC and I did it on a real common sense level. AMC is closed. Once it opens back up, should make some money, right? That's why I did it. Ah, shit. I don't know. But we see a lot of criticism toward meme stocks. So break down, if you don't mind, Doc, what exactly a meme stock is and why in particular, like an AMC, is it dangerous to invest in or devote a lot of money into something like that? Um, a meme stock is basically a stock where the price that it hits on the market is far greater than, than, than the price that's justified by the actual fundamentals of the company. Okay. Meaning, you know, that most people that really know what a stock is really worth, they would tell you that AMC really is worth about maybe a penny a share, maybe, maybe 10 cents a share. But uh, because, you know, there are people that just don't care, <laughs> you know, they, 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 they push the price up, um, you know, and, and it, it, it kind of takes a life of its own. And, and, and there's, nothing necessarily wrong with investing in something like that as long as you know what it is as long as you know what you're doing um think of it like um like dating a girl right there there's there's the jump off maybe that's going to be the one night stand it, but you know that that woman is not going to be your wife right so the way you greet you know, the woman that you think is going to be your wife you know you met her in church or whatever you're going to deal with her differently the way you might deal with a one night stand kind of situation um so with stocks it's the same way AMC is the one night stand in the meaning that that's not the stock that's going to take care of you in retirement. That's not how you're going to build your family wealth most of the time. Uh, that's just fun. That's gambling, period. Because because that price could deflate at any moment. Right. AMC can move 20, 30% at any moment. Now, uh, the more fundamental stocks, the stocks that you might wipe up, you know, the, the, the quality stocks like an Amazon, Amazon is not going to act like an AMC. Amazon's market value is directly connected to the fact that Amazon is extremely uh, profitable, right? So Amazon, you know, so while AMC might drop, you know, in a given day, it might go from 55 to 30, uh, Amazon's not going to do that. Amazon will never do that unless something really tragic happens with the bottom line. So, so I think that it's not so much a matter of saying, okay, meme stocks are terrible, don't mess with it. It's really just saying as long as you know what it is, it's okay. Don't invest in AMC and think that you're doing the same thing as the guy investing in Amazon because you are doing two very different styles of investing. Got you. Appreciate that breakdown. Yeah, definitely. I'm good. We good to go. Definitely, man. We, we definitely appreciate you, Dr. Boyce Watkins, on the Hip Hop yes, Uncensored yes. podcast this afternoon. You go ahead and hit that like button, hit that five star rating wherever you're watching and you're listening. And good, Doc. The floor is yours. Let the people know where they can find you, 
talk about the Black Business School and any other ventures you may want to share with the people right now. Okay, well, the Black Business School, uh, we have uh, thousands of students, uh, over 140,000 all around the world, and we help them buy their first share of stock. We help them figure out how to buy a house, how to start a business. Uh, right now, we have a hotel investing mastermind group that's buying Black-owned hotels all across the country. Uh, we have real estate groups. We have all different kinds of things that you can be involved with. Uh, and also, if people want to just get started and get stuff from us for free, you can get a free copy of my book, It Takes a Village to Raise the Bar, by going to allblackeconomics.com. That's allblackeconomics.com. And uh, the number one focus of the Black Business School is uh, black wealth and black people. Uh, that's that's all we think about. That's all we care about. And we want to solve the racial wealth gap. So you ain't got to be black to be there. But just know that we exist for the black community. And that's it. Indeed, we definitely appreciate yes, your time and your knowledge, as always. Dr. Boyce Watkins on the Hip Hop and Center podcast.